Hello there, this is Santi, and right now I'm going to talk about something that has been really influential in my life in the past few years, and this is Vim mode, okay? As a computer nerd, as someone who loves learning things, I, maybe just as you, I am a fan of shortcuts, of powerful shortcuts that can do tons of things. If you can get to the point where you don't touch the mouse to do things, then you know that you're in a good track, and that is exactly what Vim mode is all about. So I'm really excited to just give you a bit of an introduction of what it is and where, how you can learn it, what, what is the research that I put together for you to learn Vim. Because Vim, you know, as it is, is not very beginner friendly. It's not really made for beginners. Even a lot of programmers don't use it. Not, not sure why. I'm not a programmer. I mean, I'm learning things, but I, I don't consider myself a programmer. I'm more of a computer nerd, a super user, wannabe, and <laughs> so on. So Vim really allows us to use shortcuts like crazy when it comes to writing and editing text, which is something that all of us have to do. It doesn't matter what you do. Of course, if you're a writer, you're really going to benefit from this. Programmers really benefit from this. But in a program such as Obsidian, where all you do is write, I believe Vim is one of the best things you can do, um, the best skill you can build in order to be productive. Okay. So I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of what I'm talking about. This is not a full introduction. I'm definitely going to give you resources. So if I if you feel I'm going too fast, it's because this is not meant to be comprehensive. This is just meant to explain the power of Vim. Okay, so that with that said, there's four ways to move around Vim. Okay, the first thing you need to understand is that instead of doing things such as Control A to select all and then Control C to copy and Control B to paste, what you do in Vim is that every key is a shortcut. Okay, so if I press J, and my four fingers are in the home row. Like when you type, all you do is put um, your fingers in the home row. And if you press J, you're going down. If you press K, you're going up. Okay, don't worry. This will make sense in a second. If you want to go right, you go L like that. And if you want to go left, you go H. So these four letters that are in the home row, the home row is where your fingers rest when you're typing. They are navigation arrows think of them as a way to navigate through things okay now you may say like okay but what if i need to press the letter h because i'm writing hello right it's like what what the hell is is like how do i even work with this but the idea of vim is that there's two ways uh, well there's actually three modes okay but in in obsidian there's really just two modes that we need to concern at least for now as a beginner uh, but the two modes that we're going to talk about right now is what vim calls normal mode which i'm going to refer as vim mode okay and there's insert mode, which is normal writing mode. It's kind of weird because normal mode is not normal at all. And insert mode is what we usually do to just write text. Okay, so enough talking. I'm going to show you what I mean. Now, if I press, if I press, um, I'm going to do shift O to go on the line above. If I press I, I can write. Okay, and now I am in insert mode and I can write as normal. In here, I can even use enter to jump different lines. But if I want to edit that text, now I can press escape. And now every key that I touch becomes a shortcut. And here's where I can do the ones that I just told you, which are just navigation. So J, well, H, J, K, L. And now we can do more advanced things. Okay, so let me show you. Shift V is going to allow us to select text. And then I can select it up. And D is going to delete. Okay. If I want to write above this line, I go Shift O. And I can start writing. If I go underneath this line, I can just press O and I can start writing. And again, if I press escape, I can DD to delete DD. OK, I can select a lot of text. Y is yank, which is the same as copy. And then P is paste, OK, which is the same as control V. But the idea is that every key is a shortcut. OK, and that's how we can really quickly, really quickly alter text. We can even do some crazy things. Uh, let me show you. Right, so just to demonstrate, say for instance, we have these lines of text, and of course, in a real world example, you would probably have something different, but okay, if we press, you know, this is gonna vary depending on your setup, but in my case, uh, Control V, I can select text like this as if text was a table. So, hello, and we can delete with X. I actually forgot this line, so let me just do that. I can delete that, and now I can, well, I can do this in a variety of ways, but say for instance, I want to delete that, and now we have hello you. And if we can undo, undo with you, it goes from this to this. Okay, just an example, of course. Now there's tons of things you can do macros which alter text in you know in a bulk way. You can do things really quick. Uh, but yeah, I mean there's tons of things you can do. You can go to the very top with GG, Shift V to select, and then go down. 
so yeah, you can do tons, tons of things. Um, we can, for instance, go to the bottom of the page. We can select from here and then go to the very top and delete that. Okay, and we can undo, of course. And the idea is that you can navigate files really quick. Uh, you can navigate text, sorry, really quickly. You can modify things. You can add things wherever you want. You can modify things very freely and you can do all types of quick copy, quick paste, delete this one, delete that one, copy this here, boom, without having to go control C, control V, control A. And actually right now I'm being very limited. I'm just showing you, showing you the very fundamentals, but there's very advanced things that you can do with Vim and you will definitely be able to see how quickly, how quick you can not only write because writing depends on your typing speed, but editing text, which is something that we spend a lot more time doing than we think. You know, we, we do something like we write a word wrong and here we can just delete the word. You know, we can go back with B, we can go forward with W and we can change in word to this thing. Okay. This word is misspelled, the spelling. Okay, cool. We can change this thing for something else. Okay. And we can do all types of crazy things. We can quickly go uh, to, I don't know, like I can see this. There you go. And now we're here and now we delete this word and we get rid of it. Okay. So hopefully I gave you a bit of an idea. I know this is kind of a messy demo just for the sake of explaining what's up. And if that seemed too chaotic, please let me know because Vim is something I really care about and I really want to teach people. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely going to be doing more slow paced demos where I really explain what's going on. But to my point, I created something uh, to help you learn it. Okay. I am creating an online course on Obsidian and right now I created a resource for free because it was originally free, by, but I adapted it for Obsidian. Now in my course, I'm going to go step by step through all the different stages of Vim. And that is something I've been planning for a while. And it's kind of like the first step I'm taking. Uh, but I also have something available for free, which you can check out now. And that is the Vim Tutor. Now, what is a Vim Tutor? Is a tutorial for learning Vim. Now, let me just, you know, I'm going to confuse you a bit more before things get clearer. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> you just have to trust me on this one. Vim is worth learning. But if you're convinced and if you're not, you can stop watching this video right now. I'm going to make better videos where I can convince you. But right now is for those of you who are already interested in Vim and who want to learn it. Now, let me show you what Vim originally looks like on a terminal, okay? All right, and a bit of a disclaimer before I show you more advanced stuff. Uh, I am on Linux. Things will definitely look different for you. Uh, but if you can just search for your terminal, like even if you don't know and you're in a different op different operating system, uh, which you probably are not on Linux, <laughs> but uh, you can just search how to open the terminal, how to open the command line or so on. In my case, I just have a quick shortcut. And from here, I can search, uh, you know, I can do tons of things and I can definitely use Vim in the terminal, but I want to show you what Vim looks like. If I write Vim, let me just zoom into that. If I write Vim, I can open it and this is actually Vim. This is a program and it's telling me that if I write help, uh, you know, semicolon and then help, it's going to tell me more things about Vim. Okay. But we don't want that. That is kind of advanced. So that's not what we want to do. Here we are in Vim. Okay. And Vim, we can enter through different ways in the terminal, one way to do it. And don't worry, this is not my point. It's just to show you what Vim actually looks like so that you're familiar with it. You, we can do something like Vim and then write the name of a file. Just like that, okay? I'm Right now I am creating that file. And this is Vim. Vim is empty. It has nothing in it. But as you can see, I'm doing all of the things that I show you. I can move around. Let me just bring the keys. Cool, there we go. So as you can see, I'm doing all of these things. I'm deleting. I'm adding lines in between. And of course, it's very messy. But this is what Vim really is. And if we want to get even crazier, from the terminal, we can even use something called Ranger, which allows us to navigate our files with Vim commands. So this is just ridiculous. You're looking at my files right now, but if we go to projects, which are more of my public things, uh, here you can see that I'm using Vim commands to enter different files. Let me go to my desktop. I have shortcuts. I have crazy things. You can you can do all types of things with Ranger. And yes, this works on Mac. Uh, I haven't tried it in Windows, but I presume it works. You can do crazy things such as even preview images really quick in here. So yeah, Ranger is crazy, but this is just to give you an idea. Like there's tons of applications that come as a derivative of Vim. So, okay, with that said, <laughs> now to my point, okay, what did I create to help you learn Vim? And this is actually for free, okay? So 
I created this project where, I mean, it's not fully mine. It's really the, the you know, the, all the credit goes to the creator of Vim Tutor. Now, Vim Tutor is the original tutorial for Vim. Uh, but in my opinion, it's not, uh, the, at least the format where, it's, where, it, where it lives is not really that, um, you know, friendly for beginners who don't want to live in the terminal, right? The terminal is, again, this weird place, the black box where everything happens, where you can look at your files and do all types of crazy commands and even run applications. But that is not what a lot of people want. A lot of people just like clicking on things and they like seeing things visually. And I honestly believe that Obsidian is a perfect balance between powerful uh, commands, powerful uh, functionality, and also user-friendly. So this is why I created Obsidian Vim Tutor, which right now really is an adaptation of the original Vim Tutor, which all credit goes to the creators of that. Um, and Vim Tutor is just something that when we write in the, um, after installing Vim, which in case you want to install actual Vim, uh, you can do that. Uh, there's tons of tutorials. You won't need Vim for this, so don't worry about this. I'm just showing you again. If you write Vim Tutor, here you will be able to see a tutorial on how to use Vim. And it's going to tell you things such as these are the, the keys that you use to move around and so on. But all of this is in the terminal. It's not very user friendly to go through. Of course, if you want to learn original Vim, which I also recommend, then you can get this. I mean, this after you install Vim, you can just write Vim Tutor in the terminal and you'll have access to it. But what I did is I adapted all of this to open in Obsidian. OK, so what I did was put all of these lessons together. I edited, edited them, uh, removed some parts that weren't re relevant inside of Obsidian. So that is more user friendly here. You can read more about it and then how to install it and so on. So for now, if you are interested and you want to check this out, what you can do is download this. You can just click on download zip. That is going to start the download for you. And once you have that file, let me just go to my file explorer. Now here you'll have a zip file, which you can extract. However you do it in your, in your operating system. I'm just going to put it extract like that. I don't usually use this, but yeah, just to make it more user friendly. And now here we'll have Obsidian Vim Tutor main. Okay, it's just the, the original one that you just downloaded. And now this file, this thing, you can put it wherever you want. Here I have, for instance, my Obsidian personal. I put it next to that. And now you can go to Obsidian. So once in Obsidian, you can just follow the normal process of opening a vault. You can just click on this. Now here, as you can see, I have my personal vault. But in this case, we're going to open a new vault. Okay, here's where I have my original one, but just use the one you downloaded. We're going to open this. And once it's open, it's going to open this new thing. And here we are. Now, a couple of things that you just need to do to make things more accessible is go to the settings. And then from here, you can just go to appearance and turn this on. I just have one of my themes in here just to make things better because then it makes the separation between words a bit better. And in here, you'll be able to see all of the different uh, files, you know, so here we have, a, uh, we can go through the tour. And then in here is a tutorial where it tells you everything that is in the original Vim Tutor, uh, plus some additional things that I'm adding. This project might change uh, by the time you're watching this. So, you know, you can keep an eye on the updates on the on the link that I'm going to leave, uh, leave below. And yeah, in here you just go through the lessons. It's very easy to use. It's the best way I can think of to learn Vim without having to know how to use a terminal, knowing how to install actual Vim and doing it from Obsidian, which is where we want to be, okay? So um, another important thing, Vim won't be activated until you go to settings, you go to editor and you, and you make sure this is on, okay? So in your normal vault, if you want to try out Vim, make sure you turn this on. If you don't want to try out Vim, turn it off, okay? So here's where you learn it. And again, this video wasn't really a tutorial. It was more of a big overview and just giving you access to this where you can check it out. Now in here, if you follow the lessons, you're gonna know Vim in less than a week. I mean, that's what I did when I first learned it a couple of years ago. It was really strange to get used to Vim. It was really counterintuitive. It felt like I was never going to learn it. But honestly, it took me a week to understand the fundamentals. And then it takes it takes a lot of time to just use it for everything. But now whenever there's whenever I have to send an email or something and I'm not using Vim, uh, it feels weird. It feels strange. Like this makes you never to want Microsoft Word again. Right. So it's a very different way to think. But I trust me, it is worth it. And yeah, I just hope you give it a try. Now, again, this project might look different by the time you're watching this. And 
if you are in the future, which hopefully you are, uh, my Obsidian Online course will cover Vim and we'll expand on this and, and you know, go deeper in, in video, showing you more things about Vim, actually teaching you how to use it, how to get used to it, some pro tips and so on, okay? So if you're interested in that, please check out the Obsidian Online course that I created in the description. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this mess of a video. Hopefully you didn't end up being too confused. Uh, so yeah, go check this out. This is going to tell you the fundamentals. This is going to make more sense than what I just <laughs> told you all about, okay? So go check it out. And yeah, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.